Now, I'm from New Mexico, and I'm a, a hardcore dyed in the wool fifth generation native New Mexican. I love New Mexico. And at first I just thought it was just because it's, you know, my home and, and, and just a, you know, sort of an instinctive bias. But then I come to realize that the reason that I love New Mexico so much is because it's isolated and desolate. People don't get all bunched up too much over there. I've noticed that when, when folks get all bunched up, what do they call those things? Uh, mm, oh, oh yeah, cities, yeah, that's right. But when people get all bunched up, they start to behave well, when I, uh, improperly and, and uh, immorally and unethically. I think, I think people are, are much better off if they're able to be independent and isolated and, 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 and instead of this, you well, know, this group happen. mentality, you know, it's almost like a, a mob thing, you know. When, so you know, that's where you get all your, you know, nasty stuff, you know, murders and drugs and horrible things like that. So I went wandering around looking for something else and I I found this place and now I I wouldn't want to be anywhere else if it wasn't for the the, the, the debilitating summer climactic situation. The, what do we call what do we call that a, a heat a heat event? <laughs> Urban sprawl uh, deterrent. If it wasn't, if it wasn't for the, yeah, well, that's good, Eugene. I like that. But if it, but if it wasn't for the heat, what I'm getting at, I'd never leave. I love it here, and the reason I love it here is because it's isolated and desolate. And yeah, it's free. The rents, it's a damn fine rent, you know. And I, and I never haven't had any trouble without, you know. I'm not one of them people that has to have a light switch or a wall socket or a faucet or a flush thing or, you know, I, I don't need any of that stuff. I've lived in the dirt most of my life. I'm accustomed to it. I'm, I'm more comfortable living that way, you know. So it's, it suits me just fine in that regard. And, uh, and an added benefit, which I find worth remarking is that, uh, you know, I, 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 I've made a lot of friends over the years. I have lots of friends. I have friends all over the place, good friends, dear friends, but I've never been anywhere where I have made as, as many friends in, in such a rel relatively brief time and out of a, a pretty small friend pool, if you will, <laughs> but I find that remarkable that, I mean, at Slab City, I've, I've met some of the coolest people that I've ever met in my life, and I think that's pretty neat, too, and, hey, they kind of, they kind of like me, they kind of, kind of, but they let me have the keys to stuff, stuff like that, you know. So I like that too. It's kind of validating, you know. I'm a big ham, you know. I self-centered, you know. I'm not, I'm not comfortable unless I'm the center of attention, right? And, and so I, I, I like it here for that too. Yeah, I freely admit it. I'm, that's the way I am. But I'm a nice guy. I ain't gonna hurt you. If you're just, you know, everything sets you off and drives you nuts and leads to thoughts like violence and vengeance and retribution and which of course those that leads to regret and remorse and guilt and now nah, the thing to do is to I mean, learn, constantly learn, but don't get 
even if you feel like you really have every right in the world, you're, justified, you're completely justified in being angry, don't. Just don't be angry. And it'll never help. I don't, I don't think it matters how long you live. Hell, I almost killed myself the other day. I guess I kind of almost kill myself almost every day, really. You consider getting in an automobile and stuff like that. But uh, I, I'm not concerned about living a long, long life. I got 55 and damn near 56 in now. I mean, how many you need? You know, about this 16-year-old kid gets a heart attack on the basketball court after he just wins a state championship, you know. I mean, you're not going to... We're not gonna. And then I, you know, the other day this 109-year-old gal. You know, I walk everywhere I go and I drink Budweiser. Mm -hmm. I'm thinking about starting smoking again. <laughs> Guy says, "Oh, you know," and she says, "Shut up, kid." <laughs> so I've outlived six doctors. And if I feel like smoking, I'm gonna smoke. I just butt out. <laughs> So, you know, and, and everything in between. No. I'm not worried about my mortality. And I'm not worried about other, the mortality of others either. But what does concern me is uh, going through this time that we're, you know, breathing and eating and drinking and pooping and such. Be happy about it. Enjoy it and, and treat others well. And I think Slab City is a kind of a sort of a zen kind of a place in, in that regard, you know, where, where you can get away with being nice and you don't get into trouble for it, you know. Whereas out there in the beast, you know, it's like, what? I don't know. It's different. This Slab City is a, a sovereign nation. It's by some sort of geo, geographical fluke. It's located in that crazy state called California, which I wouldn't be caught dead in, frankly. But it's a sovereign nation. It's a place of its own. I got this, this thing. I got this thing. My wife has a computer. So she's, I'm on Facebook, I'm on YouTube, I got an email address. Hell, Gene, I was looking at that, uh, that one deal the other night with the Slabettes. Have you seen that one? I have 26,000 hits on it now. I'm famous. Oh, you can just call me Famous Mike. <laughs> Well, my tree, since you're filming this, I'll tell the story of the tree. See, this is a, this place here is called the Grotto, and the Grotto is a lifesaver. It's got shade all the time, even in the, really the hottest, hottest days of the year. You can you die over there, but you'll survive in here. It's a, it's, it's a, you know, what it, to me, that's like the, my most important possession. In, in terms of survival in Slab City. Um, so there's always been somebody here, right? Well, about seven years ago, I had a little trailer here that a friend of mine at Portland John was staying in. And, well, it really wasn't my trailer. It really wasn't his trailer. It wasn't, nobody really ever knew, I don't think, whose trailer it was. It's just a little trailer. And uh, and then and I won't miss in names here, uh, but this other guy and his girlfriend moved in there, and they were methamphetamine enthusiasts, unfortunately. And, uh, I don't know. One thing led to another, and uh, he got angry and he torched the trailer. Now we didn't really care about the trailer so much, but I mean it caught this tree on fire. And I about had a fit, and I got the, folk, the fire company, the fire department out here in a, probably less than 10 minutes. It, they were pretty quick, but by the time they got here, see this tree.
trees to go all the way around camp. Just like here, like you see here, it went all the way. And there was only just a little pad. You almost had to hack your way in to get in here, you know. And uh, now you see what happened. It Luckily, it didn't girdle the tree, so it didn't, it's still, obviously it's still robust. It blooms every year. It's still alive and it's doing all the things that trees are supposed to do. However, it was damaged really severely, hence the crack and the, 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 the rupture in it and everything. But this is, you know, it's got a lot of buttress over here. I, I think that what eventually will happen, and I don't know for sure, but what I think will happen is it'll just sort of lean over a little bit and quit cracking. Ah. Say a prayer to Saint Saint Paolo Verdi, <laughs> the patron saint of damaged trees. I'll never, I'll never forgive that son of a bitch for burning my tree up. And I yell at him about it every year. And he still won't cop to it. Still won't admit it. And everybody knows he did it. But he won't admit it. No. But then what are you going to do? What, kill him and bury him in the desert? Hell, he's been behaving really well the last few years. I mean, there you go again, adaptive consciousness. You know, you, now, that really sucks what happened to the tree, but I guess I'm just going to... And the tree shows great adaptive consciousness skills. The tree says, oh, man, that sucked, but hell, I'll be all right. I'll get through it. But you didn't know that trees had brains and the ability to reason, did you? Hmm. They don't. I'm full of shit. But... <laughs> Happily married. That's right. I've been married. This is my third time. With the first two times I got married, it seemed more like a social obligation. You know, the kids, the, the rent, the you know, da, 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 job this, job that, school. That, that. It went all right, really. You know, the kids are squared away. They're fine, you know. But I didn't really want to get married those those times. I did it because I felt I kind of sort of had to, or I should, or it would be better if I did. Or I'd, be a, I'd be a jerk if I didn't, you know. <laughs> but no, this and here I married because I wanted to marry her. Because it, it, it sounds like a really cool idea, you know. She's smart and witty and a good listener, a careful thinker. Hey, she's got a car and a driver's license. A full set of teeth. I always like to throw that one in. <laughs> <laughs> that never hurts. Well, I got to tell you one more little story, and then I guess we can quit babbling here. You might put this in there. But uh, a long time ago, so about 12 years ago, the judge made me go to a 28-day inpatient rehabilitation, you know, drug and alcohol counseling place where you, you stay there for a month. It's either that or be in jail for another month, so hey, you know. That was a no-brainer. But all the guys in that place knew. They knew me and they knew I mean, they'd known me for years. But it was like it was just a, an absurd joke. Was, they knew that nothing that I, that they did to me in there would ever change in you know, change my behavior. And like that. Anyway, one day we're having one of these group sessions and the question is what, what, what are you going to do when you go out and rejoin society? And I just about cracked up right there. I said, rejoin? Hell, I ain't never joined that subject in the first place. But, but you know, I just, you, know, I, you can't say that kind of stuff to those people. But anyway, finally come, everybody wants to, oh, I want to get a new job, or I want to spend more time with my family, or, you know, I want to, you know, 
go to church more often or some shit. And whatever. I want to enjoy my sobriety. And they come to me and, what do you want to do? And I said, I think I'm going to see if I can find me a girlfriend with a driver's license. They didn't really laugh very much. They always, they, for some reason, they thought I was rather flippant. I, I never could. I'm not flippant, am I? No, no. But anyway, so when you get done, uh, you're 28 days. They give you a little tea party, right? I went, I went through a dozen of them when I was there, uh, and it's all this really sappy shit. Like, God, it's been so nice knowing you. You know. To keep in touch. I hope everything goes well for you out there. Oh, gosh. Good luck. You know, and, and they come to me and they're like, good. See you later. Don't let the door hit you in your ass on your way out. They didn't, they didn't like me very much. And I kind of did, did it on purpose, too. But uh, there was this one kid. They got him for driving his pickup 60 miles an hour through the desert in reverse, just drunker than hell, a bottle of Jack Daniels and drive it in reverse. He's a nice kid. He's the only one really that liked me in the, in the whole outfit. <laughs> but anyway, he looks at me at my tea party. He puts his arm around me and he says, you know what, Mike? He says, if you don't quit being so grumpy, you'll never find a girlfriend with a driver's license. <laughs> and I got news for all of them. I'm still grumpy. I got a wife with a driver's license. And I got about a dozen girlfriends with driver's licenses. But I mean, not girlfriend like that, just girls I know. You know. I could call them. I could call up and get a ride to town right now in five minutes. It'd be here in five minutes. Minions. Well, it's just because I'm such a cool dude, see. Take notes.